and my name is Dora. It's nice to see y'all. It is Monday, August 29, 2022. Almost the month. Is Almost over. September. Yes. <laughs> Almost September. I believe September starts Thursday. Yes. So we're, we're getting there. Uh, so right now we want to show you a video first, but we're going to pray before we get started because uh, we do have a lot to cover. Uh, the title? <laughs> The title is the li uh, a list of people. What was the title? I'm sorry. List of people that can get deceived, deceived. deception. Uh, because we're we're living in those days. I mean, uh, back then, of course, there's deception. There's always been deception, even from the days that. We're gonna give you a list. There, there, there's more than what this list is. We're going to give you a list and we're going to go through, we're going to show you in scripture of the type of people that are going to get deceived. And we also have a of how not to get deceived, to keep you away from deception. Uh, we may not be able to get to the second list until Wednesday, but we will get through the first list today. Uh, we want to show you this video first because we want to come together in prayer over this video uh, so we can get together and pray in agreement. Uh, but let me pray right quick first. Father, right now we come together in agreement, Father, that the Holy Spirit move through us, speak through us to minister to your people. The spiritual eyes and ears are open, ready to receive your word today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. A climate catastrophe unfolding in Pakistan. A monster monsoon. This is why. Flood water is so powerful. They a multi story building, washing away bridges and homes, crops, people wading neck deep in water. Rescuers are using whatever they can find. In this case, a bed frame and some rope to pull people to safety. Heavy rains that started in June are causing flash floods all along the Indus River. New satellites show the before and after. We have nothing left. Lost everything, this woman says. The numbers are staggering. 33 million affected. More than 3 million displaced. 119 killed overnight Saturday alone, pushing the toll. More than 1,000 dead. This bridge rebuilt 16 feet higher as unprecedented super flood in 2010 is now inundated this is a humanitarian disaster G, of very of, of epic proportions pakistan's army is dropping food and tents some families living on whatever high ground they can find tonight the government is calling for international aid saying they can't cope with this disaster on their own kelly kobiea nbc news There's actually an article that says that one third of Pakistan is covered with water. One third of it. That is a lot. Yes. yes a lot of water. That's a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And like they said, that video where that bridge, they had built it because mm -hmm. of the flood, prior, you know, many years before that. But then that was also underwater. That mm -hmm. was also giving away. So that should tell you, you know, that. Ne this has never happened to them before. It's uh, so we want to come together and pray, and 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 so this Father, right now we come together in agreement, Father, and you send laborers, Father, to them, that you send ministering spirits to minister to them, Father, Father, that you send your people to help them, Father, in this time of need, Father, that you show yourself who. You are to them, Father. That Jesus is spoken over them, Father. That they receive your word, Father. That they receive your help. Yes. That it brings glory to you, Father, of how many people will accept Jesus and be saved through this, Father. Father, we know that this is devastating. This is a this is wrong, but Father, you can turn everything to good. To, to help them and show them that you are there for them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, so here we are. 
deception. This can happen inside the church as well. And this is actually happening in the church, in the body of Christ, in the building as we speak. There's pastors. Uh, in fact, I was listening to a uh, message today talking about how God is still and going to continue to reveal, expose in the pulpit, from the pulpit itself, from people in the church. Why? Because he has to clean the house. He has to clean house first before he can minister to other people. How can he have the body of Christ go minister to people when the body of Christ itself is in and in, in, in operating in evilness, operating in sin, operating in and yeah. and controlling, operating in the Jezebel spirit. See, God has to clean the home first before He can minister to others. Yes. And this uh, this pastor was talking about how this was a heavy work for him today. That it was so heavy for him to speak it that he even told the Lord, Lord, you sure you want me to say this? And him being obedient, he has to obey yes. and speak the word of God. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to obey the word of the Lord. In fact, that brings me to this other thing. I heard another pastor mention this. He said, if you're following the Lord because you're being obedient to the Lord, you better find something else other than being obedient to the Lord that is more important. How completely wrong is that? How completely wrong is saying you better find something that is more important than being obedient to the Lord? How many times has prophets, has other people refused to be obedient to the Lord and something wrong happened to them? But this, this pastor mentioned this. He said, I had another church member come to me and tell me, I never saw it this way. So he used that in order to say this and saying, see, just because you're following the Lord, because you, because this person said, see, I've been going to church because I've been obedient to the Lord because I believe this is what the Lord is to do is service and be obedient. Well, he said he looked at that gentleman and of course he preached in front of his congregation and told them, if you're only following the Lord because you're being obedient, you better find something else that's more important. Are you kidding me? You said that from the pulpit. That being obedient is not more important. Being obedient is the ultimately most important to the Lord. You have to be obedient to the Lord. See, that is what's wrong with the church. They don't see that you should obey the voice of the Lord. Doesn't Jesus say that? Obey the Holy Spirit? Oh, okay. Jesus gave the perfect example. He said, Lord, not my will, Father, but your will. Wasn't that obedient? Mm -hmm. Didn't he see that his ultimate goal was to be obedient to the Father? That was the, I mean, it doesn't get more clear than that. Yes, because he was he was doing his father's business. Yes. I mean, even to his own parents, you know, that were, you know, over him here on earth, he said, do you not know that I'm here doing my father's mm -hmm. business? Yes. You know, so he wasn't being disobedient to his uh, earthly father and mother, but he was being obedient to his creator, to his father. On heaven, in the heavens, he was being obedient to him. So why? Because at a very young age, he knew what he had to do. He knew he had to go out and teach and preach and you know bring the word of God. So he was doing his father's business. Okay, Dora didn't mean his creator. That's our creator, right? Mm -hmm. the father, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Remember. The Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are one. Jesus is God. The Father didn't create Jesus, so we want to make sure that you understand that part. Okay, so here we are. And, 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 and okay, yes, Lord, that, that, that's what is 
being obedient to the Lord is ultimately extremely vitally important. Life or death. Yes. It is life or death. Obeying the Holy Spirit can mean the difference between life and death. And for him to say that, but this other pastor was mentioning, but he even gave this illustration. He goes, do you remember how uh, Jesus went over there and flipped the tables? Why? Because it was just a little bit. If you go back to the word, the word says a little leaven will destroy the whole bread, right? Okay. That's what happened with the church right now. You can go to these churches right now, and I keep saying it. Three songs, advertisements, and then a 20-minute preaching, and then you're dismissed. Kick you out the door. No no time for the Holy Spirit to move. Well, the way this is, flipping those, why? It started with a little bit of leaven. It started with a little bit uh, on that flipping the tables. The way he mentioned, he said, okay. Don't you think that somebody walked up to the, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and all them and said, you know what, can I just get to the little corner and I want to sell this? I'll stay away from everybody else. I just want to sell this. And then it continued to continue to continue to get larger and got larger. That's the way sin operates inside the church. Let me start with these rules. Let me start with these regulations. Let me start with all these rules that you have to do this. And then you know, it's really and that's how, if, if you know what religion is, look, look up uh, Mike Thompson and C.K. Thompson. She has an awesome, uh, 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 how she described religionism. Mm -hmm. It is very detailed. It is, in fact, we shared it on here. I, was on say, our I, page. Think, I think we shared it on our Facebook page. We yes. shared it on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get started because uh, here it is. The first one. Relying only on subjective impression, which is relying only on feelings. It'll get us in trouble every single time when we rely on feelings. Mm -hmm. And we'll use, we'll, we'll go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29, 11. It says here, a fool bends all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. So in other words, you go to a, a church service and you hear a pastor give a, 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 a message and it feels good. So you think you got something because either he was really good with all his background stuff that he, he put up on, on screen he, he was funny. He joked around. He, he was a comedy show. He did everything. And you felt good about it. But it did it line up with the word of God? See, how that's how dangerous it is. And that's how it's been accustomed. Oh, it was a comedy show. He made us laugh. He joked around. He did everything. But was the Father, was Jesus, and the Holy Spirit involved? Did he talk about Jesus? Did he bring glory to the Father? Did he talk about the Holy Spirit guiding you and leading you? Or was it just a comedy show and it felt good? Or you have gone up to the front, somebody prays for you. And then you're waiting for the feeling of healing instead of believing for it. Right. That's feelings. Mm -hmm. In other words, if, if there was something wrong with Dora and I laid hands on her and she was supposed to be healed, by faith she's supposed to receive it and not by feelings. Right. Mm -hmm. In other words, she's not going to sit there and wait for a feeling. Oh, I, I need to feel something. I need to. No, it's by faith. Mm -hmm. So here we go. We'll go to the next one. Is James 1. James 1.20. James 1.20 says, For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. You see that? For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness. In other words, somebody that gets angry does not produce the righteousness of God. Somebody just throws and just 
gets angry at you. That's not the righteousness of God. Again, where does wrath come from? Where does that anger come from? Feelings. Mm -hmm. We cannot operate like that. And if we go around operating in feelings, looking for feelings, we can get deceived. That's how the enemy operates, is by your feelings. You get hurt because somebody says something wrong in church. Somebody didn't shake your hand. Somebody didn't hug you. Somebody didn't look at you and say, oh, welcome to church. Welcome to service. Then you get your feelings hurt. And now you allow the enemy to operate like that. Yes. That's how deception comes yes, in. Because you're walking around in offense, you're mm -hmm. walking around in strife, and and you know you're you're thinking, well, what did I say? You know, mm -hmm. why did that person not not say hi to me? Or I mean, it just it's just the ball, it's the ripple effect. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing leads to another, and then by the time you know it, you're saying things out of your mouth that you shouldn't be saying. Uh, another uh, mm -hmm. word is is emotions. Mm -hmm. Emotions. People are so emotional, crying over every single thing. And that's how they operate in their life, always emotional, mm -hmm. always angry. In fact, I know some people like that, that they are always angry. And you walk around, you're like, this person just, wow. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just, yes. wow. Next one, look to human leaders. Only look into human leaders. In other words, that's who you're looking at. You have a fav favorite pastor. You have a favorite evangelist. And you just focus on listening to them every single time. And you're waiting to hear the word of the Lord from them. That's who you're looking at. I hear some people and they'll even tell you, oh, my favorite pastor is so-and-so. My favorite pastor that I hear on TV is so-and-so. Because they're looking to man instead of the Lord. And we'll give you a scripture for that. Oh, wait. We didn't miss one. Hey, Ephesians, Ephesians 4.26. I'm sorry. Let, let's go back to Ephesians 4.26 for the first one. We did miss one. I want you to see this one, too. Uh, Dorsey, please check me on that. Well, I just thought maybe you you, know, you needed to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians 4.26 is, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Okay. Be angry and do not sin. That means you can be angry at Satan. Right. You can be angry at every demonic spirit because they're they're lying to people. You be angry of the end at the enemy, but not at each other. That's right. And it tells you right here. Do not let the sun go. In other words, don't go to sleep angry. Mm -hmm. Don't go to sleep angry. So here we go. Uh, we're going back to. Let's go to Psalm 146. And we're going to the one that we just said, though, to not be looking at leaders that way. Yes, you should be hearing the word of God from other pastors, evangelists, prophets, and so on, but not look directly to them. So uh, Psalm 146, verse 3 through 5. Okay, it says here, Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. See, that's who you look to, the Lord. Did you get that? They look into a man. He's eventually going to die. Yes. And when he dies, his plans die with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he dies, whatever guidance that you were receiving from that man, and that's all you looked at, Man or woman, whatever pastor that you look at, whatever evangelist is that you say is your favorite, you're looking into that person for everything. I hear some people say today that they're looking at prophets to know what's going to happen next. What are we supposed to do here? What are we supposed to do there? Instead of going to the word of God and saying, Lord, Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. show me. Mm -hmm. Show me what I'm supposed to do. Yes. Guide me and teach me, Holy Spirit. Jesus, I need you. That's what we're supposed to do. See, right there it tells you. Whose hope is in the Lord his God. See, he even makes it personal. That's your God. Mm -hmm. That's what we should be looking at. Now, we'll, we'll go to another one. Uh, Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. It says here, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, 
whose heart departs from the Lord. You see that? Mm -hmm. That even explains it more. Cursed is the man who trusts in man. See, even God tells you what happens when you trust in man instead mm -hmm. of him. See, if we look to man for everything, as I said before, it's okay for us to, to listen to other pastors, evangelists, mm -hmm. prophets, because we do. Mm -hmm. We do it almost on a daily basis. Yes. We are watching videos. Mm -hmm. We're listening to other pastors, other prophets, other evangelists. We're feeding ourselves daily. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the Lord is our guide. That's who we look to. Yes, and he is our strength. He's you know, where we are weak, he strengthens us. He is your strength, not man. That's why it says here, and makes flesh his strength. In other words, you are cursed when you make, uh, where you make uh, flesh. flesh. In other words, you're making your Ma work. Yes. In other words, you're saying, okay, I'm going to make sure I can do as much of hours I need to go to get another mm -hmm. job, a second job, a third job. Mm -hmm. I'm making my flesh, in other words, myself stronger than the Lord. I'm going to trust right. in myself instead of the Lord. Right. And it's not supposed to be that way because mm -hmm. we are supposed to be strengthened by God mm -hmm. with his strength. And that's why I say, whose heart departs from the Lord? Mm -hmm. See, how do you depart from the Lord? Because your heart starts going towards that person right. because that's all you're focused on. I'm waiting for him to say something from the God. I'm waiting. You can hear from the Lord just like that prophet, just like that evangelist, just like that pastor can. You can listen to the Lord just as much as that. Yes. You can get a word from the Lord just like any person. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the third one. It says, uh, accept supernatural signs as absolute truth. Oh, this is a very dangerous one also. Accepting supernatural signs as absolute truth mm -hmm. in other words you see a sign and that's a hundred percent true because oh man god god is the only one that can do something like that and let, let's show you second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. It says here uh, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who did not receive the truth that they might be saved. You see that? With all power, signs, and lying wonders. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? It's lying. Lying wonders. So we have to be so careful. We have to get so close to Jesus. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us to discern. Is this a lying wonder? Is this, is this a lying sign? Mm -hmm. Is this saint operating here? Is this the unrighteous deception? Is, is this, see, right here it even tells you. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. This is the yes. love of the truth. Mm -hmm. We have this to is love it. this truth. Yes. This is the love of the truth. Mm -hmm. This is it. See, I had a person, uh, actually I had a couple of people uh, respond on social media and talk about that this is a fairy tale right here. That this book is a fairy tale. That God is a fairy tale. See, that is the a, a antichrist mm -hmm. that refuses to believe the yes. word of God. So what happens? They get deceived. Mm -hmm. With all unrighteous deception among those who perish. See, those are perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Sure. Why? Because they're being deceived by mm -hmm. Satan. Because they're believing these signs and these lying wonders. In fact, even Jesus says, you a uh, perverse generation that wants to see a sign. Yes. Jesus even mm -hmm. says that. Mm -hmm. That wants to see a sign. Mm -hmm. But see, that's the enemy doing a lying wonders, lying signs, because he knows he can deceive people by doing this. That's why it's vitally important that we don't just believe a sign the minute we see it, a lying wonder. We don't just believe the, the, that you see a miracle. Now, should you say you're in church and you see somebody get healed, all of a sudden they get healed, discern it. 
Do you, is the Holy Spirit moving in the place? Do you, are they glorifying Jesus? If they're not, if they're glorifying themselves, that is not from Jesus. In other words, if I was to pray for anyone and I laid hands on them and they got healed instantly. If I don't immediately tell them, hey, give glory to the Lord, because this is Jesus, has nothing to do with me. I just obeyed the Holy Spirit to lay hands on you to pray. I was obedient to the Holy Spirit. Jesus healed you. I have nothing to do with the healing. Right. I give glory to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now that is giving glory to the Lord. Yes. Now that. But if I say, oh, yes, yes, I have all this. I'm doing this. Then no, I'm completely wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's not Jesus anymore. And that's where that's a that's false where a sign. Fall, yes. That's a false sign. Mm -hmm. Right there. That, sh that is your number one clue is that the person that is doing, uh, uh, receiving the miracle and the hands on both glorifying the yes. Lord and giving God the glory, giving Jesus Christ the glory for that healing miracle and being able to lay hands on that person. Why? Because we are the servant. We, you know, Jesus needs yes. his people. Jesus needs his people to, to do that. Mm -hmm. needs to do that. Uh, I want to show you another one. Um, let's go to First John four. First John chapter four, verse one through three. One through three it says here. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. See? Even God told you, mm -hmm. test the spirits. Yes. God will not get mad at you because you want to make sure that it is him. Mm -hmm. In fact, God will love it that you do that mm -hmm. because then he'll know. You see, you are my child. You're listening to my word. Right. See, you're doing what my word said to test it. Mm -hmm. That will make Jesus happy that you test it to make sure it was him. Yes. Because then he knows... Mm -hmm. That person is reading my word. Yes. That child of mine is reading my word. That see, if a prophet, evangelist, a pastor, anybody that brings you the word of God and gets upset because you question them, then they are completely wrong. If they don't get upset and say, okay, well, let me explain it to you. Let me show you where it says in the word. Right. And they're glad to show you this is what the word says. Yes. And they're okay to show you. Okay, then. And if you still don't understand, okay, let me show you again. And if you still don't understand or you just don't want to understand, that's a different story. Right. But see, God right here tells you, he even tells you exactly what you look for. He said, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. That's right. See, in fact, there's religions out there that refuse to confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Jehovah Witnesses is one. We know that for a fact because we've been there. Mm -hmm. And Jehovah's Witnesses refused to confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. See, and then what does it tell you? And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. That's how you're going to know. Mm -hmm. The minute that person refuses to say that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, died on the cross, rose on the third day, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, is not from God. Right. That's when you say, I don't think so. I'm walking away. Or you start casting out demons. That's right. One or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. <laughs> yes. You make that choice. I'm about to cast some demons out or I'm walking away. Yeah. One or the other. You let the Holy Spirit let the Holy Spirit right lead there. You. Yep. Uh, where are we at? Okay, Mark. Let's go to Mark. Mark uh, 13. Twenty-one through twenty-three. Okay, it says.
says here, then if anyone says to you, look here is the Christ, or look here is there, he is there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But take heed, see, I have told you all things beforehand. See, even Jesus is telling you, see, mm -hmm. take heed. Look, I'm telling you right now, before you get to see it, I'm telling you right now, before you actually get to see it with your own eyes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? That's wonderful that God said, look, here, I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to tell you before you actually see it in front of your face. See, what is it saying? For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Right. Who's the elect? You. Mm -hmm. You've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You're the elect. They want, these demonic spirits want to deceive you. Mm -hmm. These false prophets want to deceive you. See, that's why it's so important. As we were showing you, look, test the spirits. Yes. Pay attention. Don't just look for signs. Why? Because these signs can be fake. Mm -hmm. These wonders can be fake. See, if you remember, I don't know how old you are, but <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> if you remember back uh, in Waco, David Koresh, mm. he said that he was Jesus. He tried to look like Jesus, except he was wearing glasses, and Jesus is perfect. Jesus doesn't wear glasses, that's just right. to tell you that. I mean, that should have been one of the signs right off the bat. That should have I mean, been like, a clear... Jesus, <laughs> what you doing with glasses? A clear Where... sign. Yeah. What are you doing with glasses? They didn't have glasses back then. Why would you need glasses now? That's right. I mean, Jesus, you, you went up to heaven, glorified body. Why would you need glasses? Jesus, you healed everybody else. Why would you need glasses? See, that should have been a sign. Mm -hmm. The other one was the same way. Uh, was it Jones? Uh, Jim Jones? Yes. I believe Jim Jones, the one that, that killed all the people with that. With they, that's where it said, don't drink the Kool-Aid. That's where that came from. Mm -hmm. He was wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. I mean, that should have been another sign mm -hmm. right off the bat. And these people followed him to a different island. That's going back to, you know, following man. Following? See, yes, mm -hmm. follow. It went That's back to following back man. To following man. Mm -hmm. But even Jesus said, then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, Jesus, or look, he is there. Do not believe it. See, right. even Jesus told you they were going to do that. Again, these people were looking for signs. Mm -hmm. They're looking for wonders. Yes. And that's what deceived them to believe that, to follow that, to follow man. Mm -hmm. So yes. where are we at? Um, one, two, three. Four. Okay, number four. Person's ambition looking for flattery. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, that is something a, a um, it, it happens mainly to pastors, uh, people in the ministry, Bible ministry, mm -hmm. prophets, evangelists. It, it can happen to any of us, any of us. And, and this one is Galatians 6. What are you doing? Galatians 6, 14. Okay. Or you want 6, 3 first? Uh, let's do Galatians 6, 3. Okay. All right. It says here, for if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Okay. You know how that can work? I'll give you an example. If I was to stand up here and say, look, I'm going to hear from the Holy Spirit. And we're going to pray. And I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. That's me thinking that I'm mightier than you. Right. Thinking that I'm the only one that can hear from the Holy Spirit and you can't. That's what that is. And that's completely wrong. Because you can hear from the Holy Spirit just like I can hear from the Holy Spirit. In fact, that's what Jesus wants. Jesus wants that relationship that you're so close that you listen to the Holy Spirit daily throughout the day. That the minute the Holy Spirit wants to say something to you, hey, hey do this, do that. Get away from here. Don't do that. Get away from there. Go here. Or minister to that person. Pray to that person. That's what the Holy Spirit wants, that relationship with you, that the Holy Spirit can speak to you on a daily basis. Yes, yes. So if I think that I'm mightier than you, that's what that scripture is, thinking that you're something more than somebody else. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pastors that operate from the pulpit that way, that say, oh, no, 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 no. You don't get to come and tell me anything. 
Oh, no, 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 no. You don't. How, why not? If the Holy Spirit said for me to go tell you something, it is up to you to pray. Right. Seek the Lord for yourself and ask the Lord, Lord, was that from you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was that from you, Lord? Yes. Are you trying to correct me? And I wasn't listening mm -hmm. before. Yes, yes. Because there are times that it is for correction. Yes. It is for correction or it is to, uh, to, to, um, what is, uh, you were too busy, so you didn't hear. Right, right. And also for confirmation. Because you could be asking the Lord for something that nobody else, you've never told no one. And you're asking the Lord, and you're like, Lord, you know, send me, send me, you know, a sign confirming your yes, word. Uh -huh. And this person that you, I mean, does not know anything about what you are going through or what you've asked the Lord and just comes up to you and just gives you the exact word that you are that and you, you know the Lord. You know it's from God. Who else could it be? It's from the Lord. So there's those, and then just like Ray was saying, for correction. So there, you know, that that is that is something that, you know, that's another way of discerning and knowing mm -hmm. that is from the Holy Spirit. And but remember, correction comes with love. Mm -hmm. Correction doesn't come with guilt. That's right. That's the enemy. Mm -hmm. Correction doesn't come with, well, you have to do this, this, and this and that in order to be a worthy now. No, that's not correction. Correction mm -hmm. says, look, you missed it. Mm -hmm. You missed it. Now let's get back. Let's right. get back to it. Mm -hmm. That's love. We have to get back to it. Mm -hmm. Not coming in judgment. I can't believe you missed it. You're a pastor or you're so and so. You've been in the midst. I mean, that's yeah. that's not love. That's being judgmental. Mm -hmm. That's from the enemy. Mm -hmm. But if I came to you and said, look, this is the word from the Lord. And I gave you the word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then I said, see, and, and I knew it was from the word of the Lord. And the Lord said, it's okay. Now just repent. Repent, mm -hmm. and you're forgiven. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 in fact, most of, in fact, all the times that the Lord has given me a word for somebody, there's always three "I love you." I love you. I love you. I love you. At the end, and Dora pointed out to me, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I didn't catch it. I just said, I love you. I love you. I love you. Every time the word of the Lord came to me to give it to somebody else, that's how it came. At the very end, it was, I love you. I love you. I love you. I thought just the Lord was saying it three times. <laughs> the Lord said, no, that's the Father, <laughs> Jesus, and the Holy that's Spirit. That's just an intimate way of the Lord speaking to Ray and telling him all three of us are confirming mm -hmm. this word. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just a very intimate way that he mm -hmm. speaks to Ray in that way. <laughs> So it's uh, Galatians 6.14. 6.14 says here, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. See, it says right there, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, that's the only thing you should be bragging about. That's right. You should not brag about this. All the work I'm doing. Look at I, look at I, 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 I. That's when I heard the pastor day, that it was. I, I this, I that, I this. I was like, okay, I know where I came from because Satan said, I, 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 I will right. ascend, I will do this, I will do that. Mm -hmm. So be careful. If there's a lot of I's in your sentences, you're going to have to check yourself because right here it says, but God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Notice, he crucified himself yes. to be with the Lord. Yes. In other words, you consecrate yourself. In other words, you, you do away with self. Mm -hmm. It's no longer self anymore. That's right. And that's what the Lord is saying. Don't brag about anything else. The Lord will give you blessings the lord will bring you up and show you look but you don't do it yourself yes. let the lord do it for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. so um uh, unwilling to face persecution and suffering unwilling to face persecution and suffering how many christians and how many pastors close the doors Mm -hmm. because they didn't want to suffer persecution they didn't want anything they went whoa, whoa, whoa. 
how many have backed away from confidence? Because I'm persecuted. How many have shut up on social media because they don't want to show that they were lovers of Jesus? How many refused to stand against Kevin Bates? Because they didn't want anybody. How many refused to call evil evil because they don't want to get in an argument with somebody? How many have gone to work and say, you know what? Uh, as long as they don't bother me, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say it's evil. I'm not going to say that's sin. I I'm going to be quiet because they're afraid. See, let's look at what the Word of God says. And let's go to 2 Timothy mm -hmm. 3, 12 through 15. Right. It says here, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and assured of. No from whom you have learned from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. See, look at the verb again. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That's right. See, you're going to suffer persecution. Maybe not in the extent as some other countries. Maybe even more now because mm -hmm. okay i want you to under and, and and listen to what i'm saying open borders mm -hmm. open borders supposedly there's already over two million people from other countries in, in the united states already in this country other countries that have different beliefs that have a different types of persecution mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh can you leave that back up there different types of persecution already here in the United States. And you already see the administration that we have in the government right now, in Congress, the politicians in there, in the White House. Look what they're after. They're going after the church. And if you look at that first sentence, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But what does it say? Who desire to live godly that's right who desire to live godly mm -hmm. so how do you know you're suffering persecution because you desire to live godly you are living godly if you're not suffering persecution and oh they know you love jesus they know you're walking with the lord they know oh we can't run that person because the holy and everything that's a type of persecution. Mm -hmm. Yes. It doesn't have to be drastic where they take you out on the streets and beat you. That's right. It's just bullying around is a type of persecution. Mm -hmm. And what does Jesus say, right? But even men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. What is going on today as we speak? Evil is growing more and more. They're being more deceived as they continue to go in their own path yes mm -hmm. yes it, it, the word of the lord is always true always true and it will always show itself to be true right and and his word says he he doesn't say okay then you need to stop and not go not be doing my work oh yes work. yes no. uh -huh. he says but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from who you have learned them so the lord has said okay this is what's going to happen you're going to be you're going to have persecution there's going to be evil mans and they're going to get worse and worse each time each time coming and coming but you still have to do what i have asked you to you must do continue you have to continue continue in in the process continue in doing the will of the lord mm -hmm. and i'll show you uh I think we're close to first peter first peter 5 8 
8 through 11. It says here, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, right there it tells you, by your brotherhood in the world. In other words, other people are suffering the same things that you're going through. Yes. You're not alone. You are not alone. Somebody else has already gone through what you have gone through mm -hmm. and made it through. Yes. So you're not alone. Somebody may even be going through it right now as we speak exactly what you're going through. Yes. But God, what does God say? But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. See, that's making it a past tense. Mm -hmm. After you have suffered a while, perfect, established, strengthened, and settled you. In other words, God is building you up mm -hmm. during the persecution. Yes. You are growing in faith. You are growing closer to him. He is molding you yes. during, during that persecution. He did you. He tells you. After you have suffered a while, perfect, established, strengthened, and settle you. He is giving you the strength. He is teaching you. He is growing you. Mm -hmm. He is there for you. See? Jesus didn't say, oh, wait a minute. While you're doing that, I'm going to be over here. That's right. He did not say that. He didn't say that. He, <laughs> he said, I will never leave you or forsake, forsake you. Yes. So he is walking with you through that persecution. With that, Remember, you're going through it. You're not going to stay there. And he's not going to leave you by yourself. No. I want to show you one more on this one. And this is Revelation chapter 21. Verse 7 and 8. I want you to see what happens for the people that refuse, refuse to go through persecution. 7 and 8. Mm -hmm. It says here, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, look at the first one. He who overcomes. How do you overcome if you stand back? In other words, for you to overcome, you have to be in the fight. Yes. You have to be in it all the way. And why? Because look at verse 8. But the cowardly and unbelieving. The cowardly. Mm -hmm. The cowardly don't get involved in the fight. The cowardly don't continue to push forward. The cowardly close their churches. The cowardly stay away from politics. The cowardly stay quiet mm -hmm. when the tough gets tough. The cowardly don't even speak up against killing babies. The cowardly won't speak against sin. The cowardly will not say evil is evil. The cowardly will stay behind closed doors. The cowardly stay silent. See, that's why God said, he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Mm -hmm. See, he overcomes. In other words, for you to be overcome, you have to get the fight. Mm -hmm. Not back down. You have to continue. See, an overcomer, he overcomes. How do they overcome? So in other words, they continue until the rapture, mm -hmm. until the end. Until the rapture or the end of their life. Mm -hmm. They continue. They didn't give up. They didn't stop. They didn't stay silent. They pressed forward. They kept doing the things. They kept the doing Lord. the they will kept, of the Lord. They kept doing it. Mm -hmm. right. Let's go for the last one. Ignorant of scripture. Ignorant of scripture. Mm -hmm. In other words, I was going to look up a law for you where it says that it is not a, a defense of being ignorant of the law. That is not a defense. And look what the Bible says. Uh, where do we go? Uh, what do we go? First Corinthians, since we're right back here. Oh. 
Let's go to First Corinthians. Chapter 14, verse 38. Okay, it says here, but if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. and, and let's show you, uh, what's the next Hosea? Is Hosea Hosea. close by? Yeah, Hosea's right there. Let's go to Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. says here, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. See, that is straightforward. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. How do you get knowledge? Get it in the word of God. Mm -hmm. You reject the word. You rejected the some of my word. You have rejected of reading my word. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many times do you read the Bible daily? Some people, you can see, and there's a cake of dust. They don't want to read it. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of people are carrying their phones around, but you know you're not reading your Bible when you're looking at your phone. You're going through all kinds of stuff. Yes. But see, that's the Lord said. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. God said, my people perish because they don't have knowledge. Mm -hmm. They don't get in my word. Yeah, and, and he's we'll, going beyond you. He's mm -hmm. going to your children as well. All right, we'll do one more. And that is Leviticus. Leviticus 5.17? Yes. It says here, if a person sins and commits any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he does not know it, yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity. See, isn't that the same as the law that we talk about? Mm -hmm. That, yeah, just because you don't know it, you're still guilty of it. That's right. Still guilty of it. Mm -hmm. See, we're not we're not babies. We're not two year olds. We should already know the word of God. We will continue to learn the word of God daily. We don't know everything. We will never know everything. We want the Holy Spirit to continue to teach us. Yes. And that's how we all should walk. So I know we didn't get to get to the other list. We'll get to the other list on Wednesday. I figured that's what was going to happen. Uh, but this is just a list of of how. These people are going to be deceived because this is what they look for. Yes. And the Lord has shown. He showed you in his word. We just showed you in his word. Now we'll show you the other ones on Wednesday. And we'll show you in the word for the other ones as well. So right now I know we're out of time. But uh, I'm going to pray for you right quick. Yes. Father, right now we come together in agreement, Father, over every person listening. Yes. Father, that you minister to them, Father. That you minister your word to them right now, Father. That the words that they heard you today to speak, Father, that it bears fruit in the Father. That their spiritual eyes and ears are open. Father, the Holy Spirit speaks to them. That they allow the Holy Spirit to discern quickly, Father, when there is deception around the corner. When there is deception being spoken. That they are able to tell right off the bat, Father, no, I'm not going that route. Because that's Father, that they walk their ways, Jesus, that they take your steps. And Father, that you bless them and minister to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. We want to give you the opportunity also to partner up with us. You can find us through PayPal under Marriages Restored in Faith. You can also text to give. You can text MRI Faith. That number is 432-286-1664. We want to thank you for partnering with us. We want to also pray over our partners right now. Father, we thank you, Lord. 
We thank you, Father God, because you are the God of the abundance, God of the overflow, Father. Thank you that you bless our partners, Father, that they are obedient, Father God, to your call, to your will, Father, is how they plant seed on good ground, Father. We thank you. We praise you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Amen. We also want to remind you to put on your armor. You can find that in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. That is very, very important for you to understand how to do that in the spiritual realm and also in the natural. You can find those teachings under our Facebook and under our YouTube channel. And go and get you a Rumble account if you do not have one. Because you will, uh, all of our videos, if you can't get the full of uh, full video on Facebook or YouTube. You can definitely get them on rumble.com. Yes. Uh, right now, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, and you want to, it's at Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth, believe it in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Or if you walked away and you want to rededicate yourself back to the Lord, right now, I'll lead you in a prayer. All you have to do is say it in your own, from your own mouth, believe it in your own heart. So, Father, right now, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I said you, I believe that Jesus Christ came from heaven, died on the cross, and rose on the third day and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Father, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Father, I said that you come into my heart, that you change me, that the Holy Spirit begin to teach me how to walk with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Congratulations, Congratulations if you said it. Yes. Get in the Word daily. Read the word daily. Spend Amen. time. Spend time with the Father. Yes. And yes. watch. The Holy Spirit will guide you. Amen. He Amen. will guide you. Yes. Amen. Well, thank you again for watching, and uh, we will see y'all Wednesday. Yes. Have a great mm -hmm. rest of your week.